welcome to Crackalope. Thank you for being here. Today I'm bringing you a Kickstarter preview of Snapship's Tactics, available now if you follow the link in the video description. And with that, let's take a closer look. So, let's get into the nuance of exactly what Snapship's Tactics is. This is, at the end of the day, a, a skirmish game. A game where you're sailing these ships across outer space, doing your best to smash into each other, uh, fire rockets, hit lasers, and rip off pieces of your opponent's ship. Now, the interesting thing is it's actually built on a modular mobile toy line called Snapships, which already has millions of dollars in sales and a lot of different modular parts that'll all eventually become part of this board game adaptation. You see, every single ship you have here can be broken apart, from the wings to the cockpit, all the way up to the different uh, body part pieces that go into actually building the structure of the ship itself. These all combine with asymmetric player powers and abilities depending on the ship that you've built. You then fly them out into space, smash them into each other, and watch as uh, pieces get destroyed, limbs get ripped off, and in about 15 to 20 minutes, you've determined whether or not you literally have built the best ship in the universe, or you need to go back to the drawing board and give it another swing. Here's the cool thing. This has a ton of toy factor. If you enjoy playing games with your kids, if you like things that give you modular mobile parts, it's got that in spades, from wings and divots that fly and sweep and swoop, all the way down to, like I said, uh, cockpits that uh, maneuver and angles that allow you to look like you're actually sailing across the sky. But mechanics-wise, it's built off of an adaptation that was originally designed for like the X-Wing modular playline that gives you this tenacity. It gives you the mechanics that you're looking for when it comes to a mobile skirmish game. Like I was saying, every single part on the ship that I have here, which is the Scarab Claw Interceptor, is related to various model parts that I've attached to it. I have the Scarab cockpit, I have the F-83 tri-thrusters, I have the blade wings which sweep to the side, I have the maneuvering fins which are going to be the divots in the back here that open and close, I have the ZM-2 heavy missiles which you're going to see up here on top, and I have the C-63 Gatlin guns which you're going to see down here on the bottom of my build. This is the ship that I'm taking out, and the ship that I'm using against the Saber XF-23 fighter. Now, in the base game, you're going to have a lot of various modular parts, way more than you see here. In fact, they're actually designing brand new custom molded pieces to fit some of the different types of gear they want to give you to attach. You see, it'll normally come something like this. Scattered pieces, of course, these are 3D printed and not colorized at the moment but scattered pieces that let you build into this modular system. And they do have blueprints, as you can see up here in the top corner, for a variety of different flighting paths and a variety of different ships, depending on how you like to play, and of course, what you want to attempt to build. Now, when it comes to the actual mechanics of the gameplay, you're going to first build your ship, attaching various model parts based off of a point system. Just like most of your skirmish games, you'll have a level that you're fighting on, like a 19-point combat, meaning that you're going to get 19 points worth of gear to attach to your base and then test run in open space. Now, your action selection system is going to be built off of a set of cubes. You're going to be using cubes to generate actions that you can then refresh at a later time. But along with these blue cubes that are your action cubes, you're also going to be potentially producing heat depending on what you're doing. Like, if you fire a Gatlin gun off at your opponent, you generate a little bit of heat there, which means you have to cool down your engines before you can refire or re-engage that weapon or that ability. And trust me, there are plenty of abilities for you to pick from when it comes to the amount of different modular parts, custom abilities, and, and crazy combinations that you can actually pair together. So on my turn, I'll progress something like this. I'll start with my main ship card, and I'm pre-generating some load points over here just so we can walk you through an actual turn. I reset my defense to a value of three with this little dial here. This will track your health and your defense. The objective of the game, if I haven't already told you, is to drive your opponent's health to zero without you, of course, exploding in the process. I then will refresh five cubes based off the ship model that I've taken, and red cubes are heat. They just get exhausted up to the top. Blue cubes are action cubes. They come back into your resource, and they allow you to take more actions. But as you can tell, I was unable to refresh all of the different actions that I need 
over here to the side. I then will do my base movement. In space, there's always a little bit of movement and drift, so I'll take this little dial. Now, this is the only dial you really need to worry about throughout the course of the game. It's going to control a variety of different factors. It controls with little notches your turn, which is always a 45 degree, but you can modulate that however far you'd like to go, so you can kind of control a little bit more to the center. And then it's going to control your long and your short movement. For instance, let me spin this around so I actually have uh, my base facing the right way. My ship's not quite on the right way. That's, that's the issue. I'm going to go ahead and fix that, popping this off, attaching the ship back on to the right location. Okay, so for instance, my long movement here will be a full jump, and my short movement would be one of these smaller jumps. Uh, so this controls your angles and controls the distance you actually move. Now, in my case, I would have to go ahead and do at least one turn to the side. And remember, I have to move some degree, but I can control that a bit. And then I do a small movement forward. So let's go ahead and control for that. And that's my base movement. That's the drift that's happening in outer space. Now I can take my actions. And I can take however many actions I would like up to the amount of blue cubes I have available and the amount of open action slots I have in my tableau. Because if there's already cubes on a card, you cannot re-engage that until you've refreshed or exhausted them again. So in my case, I could go ahead and utilize the Scarab Cockpit, which would give me two more defense, but I'd take two heat cubes onto it, making it so I couldn't use it until I'd refreshed it later on. But I'm close enough to my opponent that I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that, bumping my defense up to five. I also have my Tri Thrusters available, where if I spend two cubes, I can do a long move and up my defense once more, but I don't know that I need to do that right now. But I could go ahead and spend two action cubes and generate two additional heat, meaning my board's getting very tight and very exhausted quickly, but this will give me two more pivots and two more short moves. So for instance, pivot here with a short move following. Now, this is a good time to mention the different terrain that we have across the board. This ice cloud here, now all the terrain is going to be positive. The ice cloud over here is going to give you the chance to cool down your ship. These uh, different debris or these, these different uh, asteroid belts are going to give you the chance to get rid of missiles that might be fired after you. And the debris over here is going to give you higher evasion. This rift in the center, however, is going to force you to do another long movement in the same direction you were already traveling which means I am smashing directly into my opponent. Now, the bases are built on a different height level, so you're able to do stuff like this. The moment you smash into your opponent, you're going to continue on the same path and place yourself adjacent to the base, and then you're going to roll for damage. Now, I actually have the blade wings engaged, which means I would be able to get an advantage on my roll and potentially do a little bit more lethal damage. You see, the blade wings over here are going to allow me to count one of my blank rolls as a critical hit. Now, my base ship will be rolling four dice, checking what we got. Now, because my base ship has the passive ability to let me re-roll a dice, I will do that once more. And I'm gonna have a total of two hits with one of those being a crit hit, which is powerful because it means I get to break one of my opponent's pieces making it so they have to actually repair it before they can engage with it again. My opponent, because we did crash into each other, would roll the same thing, except they don't have the bonuses of counting blanks, and they didn't get any crits here, so I would just take some pings of damage, cycling my dial down just a bit. But it's still my turn, and I'm still progressing forward. Now, I think I'm going to pause here with showing off what I can do, because the reality of it is... I've already spent a lot of cubes on my board, and if I spend too many, I'll have a cycle or two where I actually have to refresh and recharge, or you'll leave yourself vulnerable out in space. This is not the best position for me because I know that my opponent can move forward a lot and has a U-turn ability, which is going to allow him to pivot entirely in space and potentially fire at my blind side, which will give him an advantage on the attack. That's the breakdown. That's, that's kind of how the flow or the structure of the game works. It's very simple, and the most compelling part of it for me is how modular this plays and how quick this plays. I'm able to swap parts out, to mix and match, to figure out what will be the most fun combination, and then run against my opponent for 15 minutes, giving it a swing. And if things don't work out, like one time I, I built my ship 
designed heavily around arsenals, like long-distance range missiles, but I had so little movement. I did a lot of damage right up front, but then ended up getting wrecked, destroyed on the back end because I couldn't get my ship to spin around fast enough. And it turns out I really needed to have my maneuvering fins attached because they give me rotation up to twice on the dial, which is powerful. And in this case, if I had the actions necessary, would have allowed me to run directly into my opponent, turn, and then fire with my Gatling guns, which would rip them to shreds, which would be amazing. and. A ton of fun. Here's the thing. Snapship's tactics is an interesting game for me. Because it's built off of a system that already exists. It's built off of this kind of miniature toy line, right? Then you can tell the heart and soul of it was there. And it did really well. But now it's transferring over into our hobby space. And if you like the idea of having, having a, uh, a functional toy sort of Lego building block style, where you can rip pieces off, reconstruct it in whatever manner you want. Like, honestly, I think a quick moving little uh, rocket ship like this would be pretty fun to play with. This is one of those games for you. But on top of that, the thing that's the most important for me is, is there a fun game to play beyond that? And the answer in my experience is absolutely yes. Because Snapship Tactics, while it's fun to build and mix and match, it wouldn't be very compelling if the mechanics behind the game system weren't as fun as the actual building mechanics are. And I think they've done a fantastic job at that. I could teach this and play this with nearly anyone, but depending on your level of skill and expertise, that is a ridiculous looking ship for the record, it's like a pincer, but I'm kind of into it. Depending on your level of skill and expertise when it comes to designing, creating, and playing miniature war games, you can find the degree of depth you're looking for in the various different combinations, the ship abilities, and the maneuvering tactics you have on the board. Or, like I normally do, you could throw pieces together, make something that looks terrifying and ugly, like only aliens would be able to actually fly this thing and maneuver it around appropriately, and then just see what happens and let chaos reign and sit down and have a good time. So that's a preview, that's the first look. And, and really the only thing we're left with now is what ship would you build? Let me know in the comments down below.